Okay, so uh, what I thought I was thinking of doing here is a uh, amendment to the uh, 3ds Max overview of uh, post-processing a uh, procedurally designed character model brought out of Data Studio uh, as uh, for further uh, further um, editing as to our needs uh, dictated by uh, pushing uh, our character into uh, Unreal Engine 4. But this is going to take a little bit more of an explanation uh, as it does fall uh, into the category of something a little bit more aggressive as far as as the natural flow of things so to speak as in uh, as in directly relating to the uh, rather um, large poly count as we're represented by the character as it's imported into it which is some would see as being a kind of deal breaker kind of thing but uh, if we go to uh, a, a our poly counter we'll throw that in there and we bring that up uh, you can see that uh, our total tris count this is in triangles this is the actual the actual count and weight of this character once it is imported into uh, into unreal 4 is uh, 42k now it's still reason this is with of course with teeth and the teeth and eyes and the feet that I said that you could pull out which would drop this count down to half that we looked at this as, as a poly count, you know, we can fool ourselves into believing that uh, our, our load rate here is uh, 21k, but that is in polygons, which is, now it's kind of a lie, because it's not the actual count of it, as as it is, is in Tris. So when you're talking about, about anything that you're pulling into Unreal 4, you have to either uh, indicate that it is in Tris, or triangles, or actually tell somebody that it's in polygons to count so in polygons which then they can automatically just multiply that by two just thought i'd point that out but it's still reasonable it's within with it's in the ballpark so to speak but it does have inefficiencies that are not really required so for example if we just kind of zoom up and we look at the wireframe it has our player model has definable nails which aren't necessarily required so we would want to do some editing to fine tune this down. Uh, maybe get rid of uh, some of the unnecessary edge loopings or what have you. Um, and that in itself would, uh, you know, uh, if we're talking about doing that as a tutorial, would take as long as it takes it needs to get this down to definable shape. But I've been able to get this down to say uh, around 8K and still maintain the overall uh, resolution of the character model without, uh, you know, going too far. So. In our case, our plan is that we're going to put boots and shoes on, boots and shoes on our character model. So, cut off the feet on the way and toss them out. Uh, I already have a set of hands that are going to be using repetitive, so they can be Frankensteined onto the model, and those uh, hands will be done as uh, as gloves to kind of hide the fact that they're, you know, they've been uh, cut and pasted kind of idea and uh, or appended onto the player model. So that kind of hot would be able to hide the uh, the wrist area here uh, through uh, blinging out the character model. So we can fine tune things down uh, to where we need it. Like for example, the ears, they can go and I can uh, paste on some generic uh, low poly ears onto that. Nobody will actually really notice. So we can do a lot of this post-processing, but we would still need to have some sort of connectivity to, once again, to our source chain. So all that is holy. We want to maintain that as much as possible. Now, we can use the power and flexibility, in this case, of the, uh, the stack to do those kind of edits. And uh, in most cases, we'll want to, uh, say, for example, delete off the, uh, well, we'll leave the skin modifier onto it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, create a clone of it, and I'm going to call this um, player model. So anything that we're going to do to this is going to be done on this level here. Now you want to double check your, your, your stack to ensure that what we just did doesn't happen to you. In this case, what we done, I've done is created what's called an instance modify, uh, an instance model based on the original. So you can tell that by the fact that all of the modifiers within the stack are in bold face. So any edits that we make to this model is also going to channel down into whatever model that we have uh, extracted this copy from so, or cloned it from. So we want to make sure that this is set up as unique and we want to delete the stuff off the stack. And of course, this puts us back into what we call our bind pose. In other words, uh, as long as we maintain the, the same pose, 
that we did when we skinned it to the rig that the rig is in position relative to this pose it will be always be considered uh, bind posted posed did uh, boy I just think I just made up a word there that that's not really true but because of the way the stack modifier works we can then you know channel things through it that will always be uh, connected to that skin modifier so actually let's kind of back things up a bit we're going to put our skin modifier back onto it and I'm going to delete the morpher off of it because I want to make some uh, some uh, some um, random edits to this mesh here to kind of this you know actually let's keep the modifier onto it what we want to do is actually is place a edit poly modifier onto the top of the stack and then kind of drop that down below the skin modifier now the way the modifier works is it starts its process from the bottom and works its way up to the top so we start with our base uh, player model at the bottom of the stack here next thing it does is it goes up to the morpher it will process the information into the morpher then it'll go up to the edit poly modifier and then process whatever in the edit poly modifier and then land up eventually up onto the skin modifier now this gives you the opportunity to add additional modifiers on top of that that will allow you to maintain a connectivity between whatever model it is you established uh, as your base edit and then say do fine tuning as say to uh, the need for uh, low resolution objects and so forth so in this case let's throw on another modifier on here which is the uh, pro optimizer just for the sake of bandit for 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 testing purposes and we're going to isolate that so we can see what's going to happen here once we start uh, playing around with stuff here okay first we want to, add, uh, to do a calculation and calculate the model we want to turn that off because what we just did is we blew off our textures so we lost our all our texturing and UV mapping once we did that so we want to keep the textures it'd be a good idea to keep the UV boundaries because uh, this model here has uh, separate limbs from the rest of the torso so if we don't preserve that then it's going to want to uh, to optimize those across those edges and you'll lose your uh, UV mapping uh, across those and get some really nasty seams so we we'll calculate that again at 100% and you can see that our count is still where our count is so haphazardly we're going to calculate this down to by 50% and you can see that we drop down to uh, 10k as to our vertex count which is another tank count that you got to keep track of kind of idea but if we render it out we didn't lose much in the way of resolution of our player model so we just basically dumped half of off of it off our character model without uh, without losing too much in the way of resolution of the overall shape form so you can start uh, you know obviously doing it this way by between the edit modifier and the optimizer you can start getting things down to things that are a little bit more reasonable but so what you can do now here is for example is because of the translation mode uh, yes we go back up to the pro optimizer and we recalculate our model and then we got our low resolution of our zombie there so you can see how there's a somewhat of a connectivity between this and that and the other thing where what might be problematic though is you want to ultimately say for example have your base base character model that it really doesn't have all these types of edits to it can get a little bit confusing or you can kind of you know misstep and and, and, and start losing uh, some kind of connectivity between uh, data studio and 3ds max to the point that you really can't generate any more type of character models off of the off the single frame so let's let's kind of back things up a bit here what we're going to do is we're going to delete the uh, skin modifier at this point off of it we are going to go down into our morpher modifier we're going to set this back to our base shape then we're going to uh, go back to our optimizer and what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate it but let's get a little bit more nuts and bring that down to say like something like 25 percent uh okay um just kind of overviewing uh, the nature of LODs is once you get to a certain point it really doesn't matter as long as you can keep maintain volume as to shape it doesn't really matter how good looking it is you know you have something that's like way out there you're not going to be able to tell that the UV mapping is all bunged up or or you know things are pinching or not looking correct as long as you can maintain the volume so you can see this like this area in the belly button area here we got this really weird facing cross hatching going on um, so you know 
usually for the first couple of LODs, I like to do them by hand to make sure that uh, you know I'm maintaining good cross looping and so forth. But after that, once we get to about say here, you know, it's all fair game. So, but uh, as part of the idea of creating uh, low resolution uh, player models, uh, we have a basic shape and form, and we can that we can get to by design. We want this to be our uh, uh, our base player model that we will be exporting into Unreal 4 and that's a lock kind of idea as to um, as to fine-tuning for uh, lower detail but we still want to be able to create a connectivity between uh, a, a, a uh, source chain between uh, Daz Studio so we can continue to bring in uh, more unique shapes and so forth as to uh, a procedurally driven character design so with this set up here, uh, well, first thing we can do is delete the uh, delete that. Go back to our pro uh, optimizer and do a recalculator, recalculate. And then we go ahead and we can convert this over to a uh, to a poly object. So this gives us, um, you know, we can say okay, <laughs> we can uh, uh, lie and say that this is uh, a, a really super fine tuned, low detail resolution mesh. That you know, and it's going to meet our needs in, in all aspects in regards to uh, a, a procedural driven character. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let's uh, do an unhide all here. Actually, you know, looking good, what we can do is we can just exit isolation mode, and that brings us into our our mail base and our low low poly molly edit. Now, let's just make double check and make sure that these are the only two objects in the scene. Now we want to create a we want to create connectivity as part of a source chain between what we just described here because of of what's coming out of Dash Studio into 3ds Max into our low resolution model and create a a, a chain of connection between the, these uh, uh, tool driven um, uh, key features. So what you can do in this case is we can select our mail edit and we can select a what's called a skin wrap modifier. Now, the skin wrap modifier is a really nice tool in that you can take our our basic form and shape that we created a low resolution proxy or a resolution uh, LOD or whatever, and we can add the mail base as the target. We're gonna have to give this a little bit of time to kind of figure it out the uh, the uh, you know the connection between the two of them. And uh, you know, this is the waiting time that you have to do when. Uh, you're using a high resolution player model and then you're trying to think of things to say and talk about in the meantime while you're waiting and waiting and waiting at some point you can unclick the ad it's a good idea because to make sure that your ad is unchecked because you can go and oh, okay well that's done and you can go click on something else and you gotta wait forever because it's going to want to bind it to that uh, and add that to its its wrap deformation uh, setup here so you can see that this puts a skin wrap modifier on top of the stack here and uh, if we uh, let's see how we can do this okay if we take our proxy mesh edit and we take that and we put it onto the top of the stack so now it hides when we have it hit on top of the stack we should be able to go to the player mesh select it in the uh, modifier it's going to be hidden but will still, still give us access to the morpher and so forth so now with the binding, if we go, you know, we want uh, uh, a male zombie. We want a female zombie. We can see that it still deforms somewhat uh, correctly. You know, uh, we did a, uh, a, uh, a, 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 once again, we did a procedural type of uh, edit to it. So, you know, if this is going to be our base model, we want to be a little bit more picky fussy about what we're going to exclude as part of the model. But we once again have established a uh, connection between uh, our player model and uh, our base player model and uh, the character driven uh, procedural tools that are available in DS. And uh, now we can just once again go back to however we want to export this. We can create more shapes, for example, off of this and reapply them. So, you know, in this case, we're going from uh, 
DS into 3DS Max, which then we extract the more shapes from off the base model, creating a low resolution version of our model. Then from that, we're skin wrapping that model to the base player model. And then from here, we can extract another set of uh, shapes that we can then directly apply as a more shape to our base player model. So well, I hope that's not too confusing, but uh, I hope it as an over overview, it just tells, gives you an idea just how flexible you can make based on choices and decisions that are available to you rather than having to settle for uh, a set pathway, which is you know, typical of, uh, of most engines that I've, uh, game engines that I've, uh, I've tried out. There's not enough flexibility, but you know, Unreal 4 seems to be biased more towards using uh, 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 pathways and tool sets that, are, that are, have a, a lot better connectivity to uh, uh, DCC applications like 3ds Max or even uh, uh, that studio. So uh, once we have this done, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and do the same process that I suggested before, do a collapse all, say yes, and we have, whoops, we can do a collapse two. And now we have our low resolution model connected to our skin modifier, which we can export into uh, Unreal Engine 4. Okay, so uh, I thought that would be a, a, an in interesting overview of, of connectivity, so uh, I added that as an appendment.